grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Welcome to our Eucharist this morning when we think about the Gospel of St Matthew's story of the weeds growing amongst the wheat and the consequences of those two growing together to the harvest time. We prepare ourselves for these holy mysteries by joining together in our prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us call to mind our sins. Wash away all my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Lord, have mercy. Against you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. Christ, have mercy. Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Lord, have mercy. The Almighty and Merciful Lord grant you pardon and forgiveness of all your sins, time for amendment of life, and the grace and strength of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, Amen. Let us pray in the words of the Collect for this sixth Sunday after Trinity. Merciful God, you have prepared for those who love you such good things as pass our understanding. Pour into our hearts such love toward you that we, loving you in all things and above all things, may obtain your promises which exceed all that we can desire. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading is from the letter to the Romans, read for us today by Mary Smith. So then, brothers and sisters, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh, for if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery, to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If, in fact, we suffer with him, so that we may also be glorified with him. I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory about to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing 
for the revealing of the children of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not of its own will, but by the will of the one who subjected it, in hope that creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay and will obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labour pains until now, and not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, grown inwardly while we wait for adoption, the Redeemer of our bodies. For in hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope, for who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. He put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in his field. But while everybody was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat, and then went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared as well. And the slaves of the householder came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where then did these weeds come from? He answered, An enemy has done this. The slaves said to him, Then do you want us to go and gather them? But he replied, No. For in gathering the weeds, you would uproot the wheat along with them. Let both of them grow together until the harvest. And at harvest time, I will tell the reapers, collect the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned. But gather the wheat into my barn. Then he left the crowds and went into the house. And his disciples approached him, saying, Explain to us the parable of the weeds of the field. He answered, The one who sows the good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the world, and the good seed are the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one, and the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are the angels. Just as the weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all causes of sin and all evildoers, and they will throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. Let anyone with ears listen. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, this year, many of us will probably have spent more time proportionately in our gardens than in any other year because we were in a lockdown situation. The coronavirus pandemic being present right across the world meant that for about three months, most people have been confined to their own homes and gardens if they have one. I am not alone in having spent many hours digging and planting, sowing and pruning with the result that now we are enjoying the fruits of our labours with a beautifully manicured lawn and coloured flower beds 
not to mention the rows of vegetables coming into season. But we all know, gardeners and non-gardeners alike, that as fast as you plant or sow your desired seeds in the garden, the weeds always seem to overtake you and your expected crops. The parable of the seeds sown among the wheat from St Matthew's Gospel strikes a note with gardeners all over the world, as it would have done with those whose people Jesus was speaking to originally. Someone, not named in the parable, but interpreted further on as Satan, that fallen angel, sows the weed seed in amongst the wheat when everyone else is asleep. The two sets of seeds germinate and grow together, their roots intermingled, and the possible damage to the wheat is noted if someone was to march in to root out those weeds. Jesus says that the two should be left alone and allowed to grow to maturity before the separation should begin. Then the weeds will be easily identified, can be removed, bundled up and composted. No bonfires, please. Then the prized corn can be harvested and brought into the barn, ready to feed everyone throughout the rest of the year. The big question for all of us is how do we perceive the meaning of this parable in our modern day setting? The COVID-19 pandemic is still with us, very much so when you listen to the daily news that Leicester and other towns are experiencing spikes in the infection rates and the consideration of localised lockdowns. We are not clear of this plague just yet. But how do we perceive the way that some people are behaving in the light of the pandemic? We've all seen the pictures of the beach in Bournemouth on that very hot sunny day in June. The crowds outside the pubs in Soho. Even now, many people are, in my opinion, behaving in very complacent manner in the face of a virus we cannot see and yet know to be invisibly transmitted from person to person. And some people can be back carriers of the virus, yet have no symptoms. Others are infected and do not know for a few days. We have little way of knowing, hence the government and Health England's concern that we all take the precautions necessary to try and prevent further spread of this new and potentially fatal disease. The world is a very uncertain place for many now. There are restrictions on travel, restrictions on our freedom of movement, with queues and perspex barriers everywhere, something we have never witnessed before. So what can we say about God's part in creation, the field where he has sown those who are made in his image? Couldn't he just put a hand in and stop this whole mess from happening? Where is he and why isn't he doing something about it? These are the questions many people are asking and it is the question that they ask every time there is a crisis point in their lives. When terrible things happen, they cannot explain. There is no answer to the question, at least not in this life as many have said before me. It is the eternal question that humankind has been asking since the beginning of the world. And even after creating elaborate theories about a loving God and the presence of evil in the world, we are yet no closer to solving this problem. It is something we live with. So if evil exists in the world, and it does in the shape of the weeds in the parable at least, there will always be individuals and groups of people who will want to march in and nip things in the bud to exercise their own judgment on the situation. The followers of Jesus, who Matthew was writing for, probably knew of such groups, not only the Pharisees, but a few other militant groups who would be all too hasty and ready to exercise their own judgment. 
It isn't easy to stand by and watch as both good and evil grow up together. But Jesus points out the fact that we are in God's kingdom and he is ultimately the one who will judge at the harvest time, the end of time. Leaving those weeds in the field allows for a possibility of change, a change of heart, a change of outlook on the world. The influence of good may well affect those intent on their not so good ways and change them for the better. We must always allow for that possibility, says Jesus. It is not up to us to make the judgment call, because in so doing, we endanger ourselves by becoming harsh critics of all we see around us, and worse, of becoming the righteous or blameless ourselves. Paul gives us a bit of a clue to all this when he acknowledges the existence of that inner turmoil of flesh and spirit, of slavery or adoption as God's children. He says that we can now call God Abba or Daddy, that familiar term. We have been baptised and received the gift of the Holy Spirit that cries out to God, in whose image and likeness we have been made. It is God who redeems us through Jesus Christ. It is God who changes our lives, who opens our ears and our eyes so that we may hear of his love and see the wonders that he does day by day. In short, we belong to a family, God's family, where we are accepted and loved for who we are and not what we ought to be. And that is surely what makes the difference. We live our lives in faith, with the hope of the eternal kingdom that is still to come. And living in hope, we are also waiting for that final judgment and revelation of God himself. We must live and wait with patience amongst everyone, accepting and processing what we can, but leaving the rest to God, until the time when we shall see him face to face and know as we are fully known. But you, Lord, are gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and full of kindness and truth. Amen. <laughs>
ready to offer comfort and guidance when we feel unsure of what to do. When we fail to find the words to express our prayers, may we allow the Holy Spirit to speak for us, conveying our deepest thoughts to our Heavenly Father. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creator God, this world and all within it is part of your glorious plan, devised and created in love for your children to enjoy. Such divine mystery, such wonder, that you should consider humankind so precious and provide for our needs. May we recognise the glory of God in the beauty and richness of nature, from the tallest trees to the smallest creatures, each perfectly adapted to life on this wonderful earth. Help us all to take responsibility for safeguarding creation for future generations to enjoy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Enlightening God, show your church the right way to reach the lost and lonely in our world, to show compassion and mercy to all who seek your face. During this time of world suffering, raise up your church so that the hope and faith we have in Jesus may enable all Christians to minister to those in their communities with the love of Christ. We pray for the new bishops of Horsham and Lewis as they begin their ministry in this diocese and for all who lead in this parish that the Holy Spirit may bless and guide them as they care for the people of our town. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Caring God, as we hear of so much suffering around the world, our hearts are broken by the lack of resources so many people endure, while we live in comfort. Hear us as we hold before you those in the Yemen and the poor and homeless in other parts of the world, already in desperate need, but now being hit by the coronavirus with little hope of hospital treatment. May we respond as generously as we can to the current charity appeals so that they can help relieve this unimaginable suffering. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Healing God, we long for all people to be restored to wholeness and re released from their pain and sickness. We pray for those today who are suffering in body, mind or spirit, remembering those who are in hospital and those who are cared for at home. We pray for those with long-term illnesses or disabilities and those who are still shielding from the virus and long to see their family and friends again. We quietly name them in our hearts now. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Eternal God, in a time of great loss for many in our country and around the world, we remember all whose lives have ended and who are now at peace with you. Through the darkness of bereavement, shine your light and hope into the lives of all who must come to terms with the death of a loved one. We pause for a moment of silence to remember all who have gone before us. May they rest in peace and rise in glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Nurturing God, help us to grow and develop as your children, led by the Holy Spirit, 
walk in with your Son, Jesus Christ, that we may bear good fruit for you, wherever you lead us in life. Amen. We are all one in Christ Jesus. We belong to him through faith, heirs of the promise of the Spirit of peace. And the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God for ever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine, and work of human hands, it will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God for ever. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Blessed are you, Lord God, our light and our salvation. To you be glory and praise for ever. From the beginning you have created all things, and all your works echo the silent music of your praise. In the fullness of time, you made us in your image, the crown of all creation. You give us breath and speech, that with angels and archangels, and all the powers of heaven, we may find a voice to sing your praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. How wonderful the work of your hands, O Lord. As a mother tenderly gathers her children, you embraced a people as your own. When they turned away and rebelled, your love remained steadfast. From them you raised up Jesus, our Saviour, born of Mary to be the living bread in whom all our hungers are satisfied. He offered his life for sinners, and with a love stronger than death, he opened wide his arms on the cross. On the night before he died, he came to supper with his friends, and taking bread, he gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup of wine. He gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many. For the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, 
Christ will come again. Father, we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. We remember his dying and rising in glory, and we rejoice that he intercedes for us at your right hand. Pour out your Holy Spirit as we bring before you these gifts of your creation. May they be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy things in your presence, form us in the likeness of Christ and build us into a living temple to your glory. Remember, Lord, your church in every land. Reveal her unity, guard her faith, and preserve her in peace. Bring us at the last with St. Swithin, St. Mary the Virgin, and all your saints to the vision of that eternal splendour for which you have created us. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence, as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, my name shall be great, shall be great among the dead. 
Let us pray. God of our pilgrimage, you have led us to the living water. Refresh and sustain us as we go forward on our journey. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Christ, who has nourished us with himself the living bread, make you one in praise and love, and raise you up at the last day. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.